Iran's intelligence minister recently made comments that his country feels increasingly uh, backed into a corner as a result of the maximum pressure campaign uh, and new economic sanctions which were imposed by the Trump administration. And his comments sort of implied that Iran might feel compelled to pursue nuclear weapons as a way to sort of deal with this pressure. Now, other regime officials have come out and dismissed these comments as not being entirely reflective of the government's position, uh, which is still that nuclear weapons are antithetical to Islam. But Iran is doing several things which point to uh, increased nuclear capabilities. And I would cite their uh, threatening to withdraw from upcoming inspections of nuclear facilities, uh, the fact that they are enriching uranium at a level that goes well beyond what is allowable by the JCPOA or the uh, Iran nuclear deal that was agreed to a few years ago. Uh, and the fact that they're creating something called uranium metal, which can be used to help form the core of a nuclear weapon. So I think it's safe to say that Iran's leadership feels somewhat betrayed by the American decision to withdraw from the JCPOA uh, and to place new economic sanctions against them. And I think that there's a reason why they're ramping up their nuclear capabilities and their nuclear rhetoric. And that is to try to convince the Biden administration to permanently end the sanctions against them and for them to re-enter the JCPOA absent any further preconditions. So there is a long history of somewhat frenzied uh, declarations that Iran is mere months away from acquiring the bomb. Uh, so I think you have to take any of those reports with a grain of salt. Uh, but there is new Israeli intelligence indicating that Iran is about two years away from actually being able to produce a nuclear weapon. Uh, they actually have enough fissile material to make them much sooner, but it's more a question of them achieving the scientific capabilities and know-how uh, to actually enable them to put it together. Uh, however, I still don't know for sure that Iran is necessarily eager to acquire nuclear weapons. Uh, I think if they wanted the weapon, they likely wouldn't have agreed to the JCPOA in the first place. And I don't think that they would have abided by the agreement for as long as they did. Uh, they actually remained uh, a party to it and compliant to the agreement uh, longer than the United States did. So I think that a desire to expedite sanctions relief through what you might call nuclear blackmail uh, is a much better explanation for their behavior than a desire for them actually to possess nuclear weapons. So their capabilities are certainly improving, but I'm still not convinced that a, a nuclear weapon is ultimately what Iran's goal is in all of this. The Israelis are genuinely concerned about Iran's enrichment capabilities, but I think their concern goes beyond that. Uh, there's been a, a long-standing worry in Israel, uh, really since the agreement's inception, that the JCPOA doesn't do enough to protect Israel, uh, that it doesn't uh, place enough limits and enough long-lasting limits on Iran's nuclear capabilities, uh, and that they don't think it addresses uh, some of Iran's other malign activity in the region. Uh, namely its ballistic missile program and its support for groups like Hezbollah. So I think if America is going to re-enter the JCPOA, uh, that Israel and the Netanyahu government would want to see several of these criticisms with the original deal addressed before America comes party to the agreement again, which of course would cut against uh, the Biden administration's plan, which would be to re-enter the JCPOA and then negotiate further at that point. So I think the reason why you see Netanyahu allowing uh, senior military officials or people that are genuinely uh, believed to be advisors to his government to make comments about Israel considering preventive strikes is based on a desire to set the tone for the new Biden administration. Uh, historically, it is not unusual at all to see Israel take very hawkish stances on regional security issues in the early stages of a new American presidency. So I think that he is trying to make it clear that America needs to have Israel's back in dealing with Iran uh, and that Israel is willing to act unilaterally to address the threat if America uh, doesn't sort of uphold their end of the bargain. Now, to answer the, the second part of the question, I, I think that there is reason to be skeptical that Israel would actually go ahead with a strike against Iranian nuclear facilities. 
Uh, one, I don't think that the entirety of the Netanyahu government would be on board with that. Uh, certainly the, the defense minister and the foreign affairs minister, uh, based on their previous positions, uh, would likely not be supportive of preventive strikes and probably would push back against them a little bit internally. Uh, but I also think preventive strikes would immediately poison Israel's relationship with the Biden administration. They would certainly undercut the ongoing diplomatic efforts uh, that Biden is initiating to try to deal with Iran. And I don't think Netanyahu is eager to torpedo that relationship so early uh, in, in the Biden presidency. But also, I would say that the risk reward factor is probably not in Israel's interest. Uh, a strike against an Iranian nuclear facility would assuredly spark retaliation, uh, not only from Iran, but certainly from their proxies as well. And I, I think that that would be dragging Israel basically headfirst into a very uh, dangerous, very politically divisive conflict with Iran at a time where I don't think Netanyahu is particularly eager to, uh, to start something like that. Uh, and I would say that's particularly true, given that it's not clear that an Israeli strike would necessarily destroy Iran's nuclear program. It would certainly set it back uh, and potentially set it back quite a ways, but I, I don't think there's really a military consensus that they could eliminate it entirely. So you'd be talking about sort of a short-term solution, buying more time uh, and weighing that against the, the trade-offs associated with such a divisive uh, and inflammatory act. So I, I ultimately don't think uh, that this is something Israel would really pursue. I don't envision them trying to launch a preventive strike against Iran anytime in the immediate future. I still think there is a window for the Biden administration to bring Iran back to the table. Iran was adhering to the precepts of the JCPOA while America was still party to it and before America started its maximum pressure campaign. And I think returning to that framework is still the best option for uh, some sort of peaceful or diplomatic solution to the problem. Iran is likely to have a more conservative government uh, after its elections this summer. So America is likely better off negotiating with the current Iranian regime than it would be with the regime that's likely to follow. Now, I do think that the sequencing question is going to be important here. Uh, Biden does not want to reward Iran's bad behavior by removing sanctions just to get Iran to agree to follow what they'd already agreed to. Uh, but Iran is understandably weary of dealing with the United States after four years of Donald Trump and after America voluntarily leaving the agreement to begin with. So it might ultimately be up to, to Biden to make the first move to initiate dialogue with Iran uh, to see if they can find a way to bridge the gap between these two uh, seemingly unreconcilable positions, maybe take some smaller incremental measures uh, to work up to, to some sort of agreement that both parties uh, can use to get what they want. Uh, but also that I think Biden could try to re-engage with some of America's international partners, uh, the ones who helped to forge the initial agreement and see if they might be able to, wait, uh, able to find a way to help thread the needle as well. Now, I think that once America returns to the JCPOA, and I do ultimately think that's where we're headed, uh, America can and should try to address some of these other issues that regional partners have with Iran's activity. But I think it's a lot easier to have those conversations in the context of an existing framework of understanding. And I fear that trying to tack the JCPOA, uh, you know, attack, tack these things onto the JCPOA agreement uh, as a pretext for us returning to it in the first place would potentially be a poison pill that would make Iran want to walk away from negotiations altogether. So I think it's important for America to address the nuclear question first, to get back into the nuclear deal uh, and to bring Iran back into the fold before trying to address some of these other issues like ballistic missiles uh, and like Iran's support for proxy groups like Hezbollah.